I want to talk about the way in which I touch unchurchified spirituality is by de-churchifying my spirituality. So I think of the things that have been put in my consciousness that say this is who God is, this is what life is about, that really are, have been given to me from bullies. And it sounds weird to say that the priests and nuns and the teachers of my life were bullies, but they were bullied. Bullied enough to join the convent or the priesthood and dedicate their lives to the um, churchified reality. And so like, one of the things that, I, I had a friend tell me the other day, I don't even have these discussions with people unless they're really open because I just get too mad. <laughs> he said, the idea that God is a God of love and loves you, but, let's take this, let's de-churchify this part, but you were born with original sin that you'll never get rid of because of Adam and Eve. It's like, well, just kill me now. Okay, you, this God of love only loves the people in your church. Okay, let me take that, that piece off. This God of love has rules that some man or woman made up. They're not sanctioned and they're not patented, but somebody said they were true. And unless you follow them, where will you go? To be with the devil. <laughs> the devils. I had a friend say to, say to me this, this week, she was talking about, she, she used this phrase, well, it doesn't really matter to me what you believe, I know where I'm going. And I thought, my, and I bit my tongue because I was having that experience of this is good, could get ugly, was, you think you know where you're going, but where are you now? Like, are we supposed to enjoy this incarnation, this flesh, this delightful experience of communion and union and oneness? To me, that is what unchurchified spirituality is all about. It's what spirituality is about. It's hard to see if you've been living a life of faith without knowledge. And a lot of church and religion is about faith without knowledge. For example, how, how else can you buy into the fact that God really loves you and then there's a big but? If it wasn't because someone told you over and over again what it takes for God to love you, what it takes for you to be eligible to finally know communion with God, which will really only happen after you die when you go to heaven if you get in. Here's the thing that always uh, made me think secondly is you might get in, but you still got to get past St. Peter. St. Peter and the Pearly Gates, have some of, you, some of you have had, heard that experience, right? Okay, that's not just a Catholic thing, I don't think. The, the, whether or not it's St. Peter, but it's the Pearly Gates. So, like, you get there, but then if you don't have the right token to get in to give to St. Peter, <laughs> faith without knowledge. I mean, who, and who made up the harp thing? I mean, okay, we're going into, let's de-churchify, um, de-churchify our, our beliefs. When you stay in that place of precious connection, you start to allow those things that have been churchified to pass away and slide off. Without anger or regret, you just keep you move into the truth of the reality of the victory. I mean, Jesus of Nazareth gave us the keys and the tools to know the kingdom. He never said you had to wait till you're dead to know what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, he said the opposite. Life and life more abundantly. We've incarnated for a reason, to love one another, to actually know what it's like to be one with the Father. The beloved is mine, and I am his. That's not, that's only um, a fantasy if you don't open to it. But the reality of it is available every moment. I think one of the blessings of being in Colorado this time of year is that um, spring reminds you of how abundantly this is available. And six months from now, it'll do it again in the Southern Hemisphere. But as I drive here and I see that magical mist of the green trees that only lasts for about a week, I realize that breath of the wonder and the possibility is always present. And sometimes we really just need a reminder visually 
But sometimes if we don't have it visually, we get it because another person loves us unconditionally in representation of that. So I'm in the process all these years of de-churchifying my own thinking so that I can live in the reality of the spirituality that makes sense and that doesn't require me to buy into some superstition that someone said because they thought it was true. <laughs>